This is the city, Dog City, a city of dogs. But little cat culture there was in this fleet Wittenberg usually took a backseat to all things dog. Today was different, thanks to Kitty and Bugsy's unscheduled opening of DC's Metropolitan Museum of Art. <laughs> My job? Nail those thieves to the wall. Career-wise, that would add up to a grand total of 1,000 arrests. How am I supposed to catch him in this thing? I'll never know. Sorry, Ace. I can't find any model sheets of your car. Things are a little hectic around here. Oh, my head! Oh, ow, oh. Come on, let's pick up the pace. Time is money! Hey! I am the director! And... I'm the producer. Yeah. Let's pick up the pace. Time is money. Where's the best boy? Here, boy. Here, best boy. What's the pick? You know it, Bouncy here. The best, best boy money can buy. The besties. Where did you find these? They work in the building. Mm. They work cheap. Well, they work for me. Okay, back. Okay, back to work! Back to work, you dudes! Back to work! Give me that thing, you! Give me that! No. What the heck is going on up there? Oh, oh, they're doing a TV interview, Ace, for the best of show show. It's about canines. Interesting canines. And this week, it's all about me. I'm happy for you, kid. Every doggy needs a little recognition for his efforts now and then. Boy, you ain't kidding. Elliot? Oh, boy. Looks like this is the end of the road for Ace Hot. Elliot? Drawbridge? Drawbridge? Draw the bridge! Oh, oh sorry, Ace. Sayonara, sucker! <laughs> huh? Lucky for me, Bugsy ran into the one law he couldn't break. Ah! Law of gravity. Then the brakes. And speaking of brakes. Elliot! Oops. Geronimo! Ah! It was another one for the books. Case number 1000. Closed. I'm not one for patting my own back, but only a handful of private eyes have made it into the 1000 Club. It was an occasion to be mocked, a time to celebrate. Let the party begin! Hey. Bopo bash, kid. I just don't get it. 1000 cases cracked and all of my friends are no-shows. Where's the kudos? Where's the glory? Where's the dip? You know what you always say, Ace? Glory is for saps. Oh, yeah, well, you see, Eddie, uh, what I meant was, uh... Eddie? Elliot, what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Ace, I was just uh, thinking. Thinking I have no idea where this story is going. Uh, this interview has got me distracted, I guess. Wow, Mr. Shag, sure is cool you having them use your apartment like this. Yeah, well, when you told me that, that DCTV wanted to interview a VIP, well, how could I say N-O? <laughs> I was flattered. All right, that's lunch. Actually, what I really want to do is write. Direct. Direct. Change of plans. We're working straight through lunch. On second thought, we're working straight through lunch. Uh, no sustenance break. Huh? The union's gonna hear about this. Party. Yes, sir. Bring in your mom. Okay. Bring in your mom. Oh, Terry's coming over. Will she be impressed? Hi, Elliot. Hi, Terry. Oh, isn't this exciting? Oh. <sighs> I guess it's all part of the lifestyle. Makeup! 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 Not him! Her! Achoo. Come on, honey, let's go. <sighs> oh, they're interviewing Terry. Your mom is the very important pooch? Yeah. Isn't it neat? Yeah, sure. Just that I, well, she I thought... She was just voted business mother of the year. She was? Uh -huh. Wow, wow. Just when you think you know someone. Don't be too disappointed, kid. Disappointed? <laughs> Who's disappointed? Well, you and me, for starters. And you know who bummed me out the most? Rosie. This is vintage old gravy. All she cares about is herself and her career. 
don't know, Ace, is sometimes you think you know somebody, but you really don't. Hey, that's it. That's the story. Uh-oh. I know that look. What are you thinking, Elliot? Oh, you'll see. <laughs> I bet that's Rosie. I knew she'd come. Still blowing your own horn, eh, Hart? Was the father of Rosie O'Gravy. First name, Tub. Bow wow! Tub O'Gravy! Legendary Dog City Police Dog! Tell us something we don't know, kid. The chemical formula for caffeine is C8H10N4O2. I didn't know that. All right, you two, kind of comedy. I've got a problem. Then do what I do. See a vet and spare me your life story. There's that professional rivalry. By the way, how is Little Miss Snubber friends on the most important day of their lives? I wouldn't know. She's gone, Ace. For as long as I'd known him, Tub had rubbed my fur the wrong way. But that didn't matter now. The real rub was Rosie. She'd vanished. And I'd stop at nothing to get her back. Gee, Ace, what do you think happened to her? Your guess is as good as mine, Eddie. But I have a hunch it won't take long to pick up Rosie's trail, because I know everything there is to know about Rosie, and then some. Then let's get tracking. What's her address? I don't know. Why is she so by the book? I don't know. Any hobbies? I don't know. Middle name? I don't know. Gee, Ace, how are we going to get anywhere like this? I don't know. Hey, look, it's Rosie. Where, where? There, there. Follow that cab. <laughs> 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 It was Rosie, all right. I was close. So close I could taste it. Let's blow this toy stand. This is Chief O'Gravy's duty roster. It contains every movement Rosie made before she vanished. Here, yeah, kid, commit this to memory. Bow wow! I had no idea Rosie was so civic-minded. She delivers lunches to shut-ins, she's a big sister on Saturdays, and she's donating blood on Sunday. I gave the guy directions once. Such a terrible, terrible loss. I remember when Rosie was just a wet-behind-the-ears rookie assigned to the thankless task of being my personal bodyguard and food taster. Oh, those were dangerous times, and on more than one occasion, she threw herself in the line of fire to save my bacon. Poor Rosie. I had no idea. She sure paid the dues. Carpet winner! Don't I know it? Hello, what have we here? Deliver the goods to M. Bonato. Friday night, 9 p.m. No, oh, you shouldn't be reading that. It's a... It's a... a top secret for official eyes only. It's a, probably a, nothing. Just, um... Now, what could have gotten into them? After our depressing conference with the mayor, we decided to sashay over the Rosie's roost. The landlady let us in. What are we looking for, Ace? Things, Eddie. Things that don't fit the picture. Things that cut against the grain of Rosie's character. Things that stick out like a sore tongue. Like this plaque commemorating her solo swimming of the Atlantic? Uh... Or this picture of her playing the sitar with Ravi Shankat? Or this one of Rosie working side by side with Albert Einstein? Um... Or how about this newspaper clipping of Rosie taking the checkered flag at the Grand Flea? Why didn't you tell me Rosie was so multifaceted, Ace? It, uh, never came up, kid. He's still here. No, I had to let him in. If you don't want him finding out, you'd better do something. Relax, it's all arranged. Remember, 1010 Embernado. 1010 Embernado? Hmm, the puzzle is coming together. Ace, Ace, come quick! Look! Oh, my dog! Rosie and Bugsy went. Steady? Steady? Boy, you think you know someone. I do. 
Maybe Bugsy could know more about Rosie than Ace does. <laughs> Ten Ten and Bernardo was a dead end. There was no such street in Dog City. At Eddie's urging, I decided to pay Bugsy Vile a visit in the slammer. As number one bad dog in D.C., Bugsy stood to gain the most if Rosie was out of the picture. Talk, Bugsy! What have you done with Rosie? Whatever are you talking about? I didn't know you two had such a thing going. Ah, for the good old days. Uh, on second think, maybe we should talk. It is with deep regret that I admit that we had nothing to do with Rosie's Bon Voyage. I am equally remorseful that it is I that made Rosie what she is today. Allow him to elucidate. Those were the halcyon days. The days of my misspent youth at good old Dog City High. As the big mud on campus, it was only natural that the most popular dog in school should escort the head cheerleader to the prom. But she came down with mono. So I asked Rosie instead. It was perfect. By escorting the daughter of one of Dog City's finest to the prom, Bugsy would be above suspicion when the results of his very first senseless crime was discovered. Then, through sheer luck on Rosie's part, she stumbled upon a plan. Using my way with the ladies, I was able to convince my mild Irish Rosie to look the other way. We got away scot-free, a first senseless act. The one what wet our collective appetites for crime. Old Tub took it on the chin for Rosie and never made chief of detectives. And from that day forward, Rosie vowed to never let another crook slip through with digits. To always play things by the book, and to uphold the O'Gravy family name by becoming chief of detectives. So you see, if Rosie hadn't messed up, we most likely would have gone to jail and eventually gone straight. Rosie, my friends, is what made us what we is today. And we made Rosie what she is today. And that's why Bugsy is where he is today. It is a vicious cycle. Gee, Ace, you went to the same school. How come you don't know any of this? Simple, Eddie. Back then, I was heavily involved in after-school activities. Although highly entertaining, Bugsy's backstory was no help in my search for Rosie. I was running out of ideas when Eddie reminded me that there was one other bad dog that despised Rosie even more than Bugsy. Our old friend, Rockweiler. <laughs> Amusing as always, Herr Hart, but I had nothing to do with her disappearance. However, we did have quite a thing going back in 29. It was a magical time. Mein Liebchen and I shared many a warm summer's day together, rubbing each other's bellies and frolicking through the Edelweiss. We even discussed tying Sinat. I don't believe this. You and Rosie? Rosie? I thought you said Josie. Rottweiler was a big waste of time, something that I didn't have a lot of. If I ever hoped to see Rosie again, I needed a break, and I needed it fast. Look, it's Rosie. That was fast. Watch and learn, Eddie. Ace Hart is about to crack case number 1001. Ah, oh, Elliot, not again. Not now. It must be difficult to be the offspringer of someone like your mom. My mom's very busy, but she's always there for me. Like when she was going to be the first dog in space but scrubbed the lift off. No doggy knows this. But it was because I was having trouble with my phonics. Terry was almost the first dog in space? Excuse me, sir? Ooh, yes? Terry speaks quite highly of you. You must know her well. Uh, yeah, well yes, I do, but uh, not as well as I'd like to. I mean, what, uh, what I do know about Terry is that, uh, well, uh, she's a wonderful lady and a really good mother to Artie. And I, I wish I could tell you more, but, well, uh, those are the only things in life that really matter. Uh, don't you think? Thank you, Mr. Shag. That was nice, Elliot. Thank you. Well, I had to say something. Miss Springer? <laughs> Elliot? I'm back, Ace. Finally. Rosie! Sorry, my mistake. Tough break, Ace. But don't worry, we'll find her. I hope so, kid. What the... Oh, uh, uh, Ace, uh, how's tricks? Fancy meeting you here, Tub. 1010 Embanado, tonight. 
9 p.m. bring the stuff. Gee, Tub, what happens at 9 p.m.? Tub? First, Tub acts all antsy in the store, then he takes the powder. I had a pretty good hunch he was trying to avoid me. Pretty good hunch. But Ace, you don't think that... I don't think, Eddie, I know. Tub made Rosie disappear, all right, but why? Maybe he's still sore because he never made Chief. Maybe he finally settled the score. Oh, movies. These could tell me plenty. Aw, isn't that sweet? Yeah, sweet. Hey, wait a minute. Who's taking these pictures? Rosie's mom, Ace. Maureen O'Greefy. She sure is pretty, just like Rosie. She sure is. Mr. and Mrs. O'Gravy separated when Rosie was just a pup. Gee, I didn't know she had it so tough. Must have been hard growing up without a mom. It's a rotten shame, but it happens. How do you know all this? Rosie and I talk all the time. Don't you? Not as much as I should have. Aw, oh, would you look at that? My old man never sewed a costume for me. The proud papa. He sure was there for her. Gosh, Ace, do you really think Tub could have done it? The kid was right. Any ideas I had about Tubham and Rosie had disappeared as fast as the kid. Go on home, kid. Give your folks a hug for me. I'm Ace Hot, private eye bum. The only thing I knew for sure was that I didn't know Rosie at all, that I'd trade every one of those 1,000 callers for just one more chance to see her. The biggest day of my life was becoming the worst. I was at the end of my leash, out of leads, and then it hit me. was the break I was looking for. 1010 Embanado was a code for 1010 Doberman Street. And it's almost nine. Boy, I'm good. Ace, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. I thought you went home. Um, yeah, I did, but I'm taking a shortcut. Goodbye. See, heel? There was definitely something strange going on. All day, people have been acting screwy. Now Eddie had joined the club. Number 1010 Doberman, I presume? Eddie? Eddie, say something, kid. Okay, Ace. Surprise! Congratulations, Ace. Rosie, I thought you... you vanished. And miss your party? You know me better than that, Ace. I think I've been had. This whole Rosie was missing thing was just a scam. And you were all in on it. Tubbo Gravy. Rosie's landlady, Mayor Kickbox. Spunky the Flunky, and last but not least, Eddie, leading me around by the nose. I should have known. Some detective. We've got a thousand callers, Ace. Ah, you guys. You shouldn't have. Don't thank us, Ace. This was all Rosie's idea. Come on, Rosie. Let's see if the band knows any hot sitar numbers. You like the sitar? Boy, you think you know someone. I was seeing Rosie in a totally new light. The Rosie I found was very different from the Rosie I set out to look for. Yes, I've led an interesting life, but success shouldn't be measured by fame or fortune, or even being interviewed for a TV show. The true measure of success is family and friends. And if you have those, you have it all. That's a wrap! Kill the lights! Kill the lights! Killing the lights! <laughs> Great interview, Terry. There's so much about you I hardly know. I uh, feel kind of silly. Oh, don't. I'm no expert on Elliot Shag either. Hey, Mr. Shag, Mr. Shag! Huh? Mom's show is on next week. Mm. Why don't you watch it with us? Oh, uh, I don't know. I uh, oh, Yes, it'll give us a chance to get to know each other. Well, then, uh, I'd, uh, I'd be... See you then. Uh... Bye! Nice going, Romeo. There's only one catch. Their show was on at the same time as our show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I fancy myself a pretty good judge of character. When the time comes, I know what show you'll be glued to. You'll be watching our show, right? Sorry, Ace. Besides, I already know how our show ends. Elliot, you can't do that. Where's your dedication? Where's your loyalty? Where's my bow tie? <laughs>